What's up, everybody? This is Tony Lopez with Alternative Living Spaces. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm really excited for today's episode. Uh, we live in a time right now where material prices are high, labor prices are high, the economy is crazy. And if you're looking to build a container home, there's no better time to build on a budget than right now. And so in today's episode, I'm actually going to go through 10 hacks to help you save money on your container home. These are hacks we've learned over the last seven years of building shipping container homes. Uh, and I really do believe these are going to help you. So buckle your seatbelt, get ready. Uh, I'm going to try to go through these quickly to just be efficient and respect your time. So let's jump right in. Number one, purchase your container near a major port or depot. Uh, so if you are looking for your shipping containers right in your town, and you're just going to the biggest container vendor in town and asking him what his price is, the reality is, is that you're overpaying and you don't want to do that. And so uh, what we recommend is reaching out to basically the nearest port. So like I'm in, uh, we're based in Las Vegas, Nevada. The nearest port to us is the port of Long Beach. Some other major depots here on the West Coast would be Oakland, Salt Lake City. Um, there's a lot of big depots in Texas all around the coast, more or less, right? So you just want to figure out where are the major areas where all the containers are being imported to because you want to buy them from those areas. So for us, we reach out to different vendors in the area of Long Beach. Um, because all the containers get shipped to Long Beach, there's tons of vendors in that area that basically just get them directly from the port. They'll put a small markup on it and then they sell them. And so uh, for someone who's just looking to buy one or two containers, that's definitely going to be your best option. Uh, you know, I'll give you a really good, good case study example. Uh, we reached out to a company here in Vegas and asked them what their pricing was for a 20-foot used shipping container. And their pricing on it was $5,500. Uh, we then reached out to a vendor that we use near the Port of Long Beach. We got their pricing at $2,800. Um, and then we will get into more detail here for some other hacks on how to get that to your property. But you can see right off the bat there, that is a big difference. $2,700 difference from what we're, we're being charged here in Vegas versus what I can get in Long Beach. Uh, so do your research, do your homework, reach out to a major port or depot, and that can save you a ton of money. Number two, modify your container near the depot. Now, this may depend a little bit on the type of build you're doing and what regulations or permitting uh, standards you're going to need to meet. But my point here is that there's a lot of basically these vendor companies that sell the containers that also have an entire division where their focus is on modifications. So they do a lot of industrial applications. So they'll do window and door cutouts. They'll add fans, different things like that. But my point is that they have very skilled labor in the area of cutouts, welding, uh, fab work. And so they're a great contact to use when you need that type of work performed. Uh, I just had the opportunity of meeting with another container builder here in Las Vegas yesterday. Uh, and they had shared with me uh, that they were basically trying to figure out all these ways to do welding within their facility. And they didn't want the welding to interfere with some of their other work that they have going on. And I was able to share with them, hey, at the end of the day, you could just go right to the port, contact a company over there that does industrial fabrications, and it's gonna save you time and money. Uh, those, those companies really are good on their prices, uh, and they'll probably be any subcontractor you can find locally to perform the work. Not only that, they're experts, so they know how to do it right. You just need to do the job of getting them detailed plans and instructions for the types of cutouts and reinforcements uh, and modifications that you'd like for them to do. They also have the ability to go beyond just structural modifications. They can do exterior paint for you. Uh, they can do some level of framing or electrical. Once again, this can depend on the type of build you're doing and the regulation that you need to meet for your specific uh, building department. But uh, really is a great resource to reach out to them. Uh, number three, uh, you can set up your own delivery. So going back to that example of the container pricing in Las Vegas versus the container pricing out of Long Beach, um, I said the difference was $2,700. Now, let me give you an example. Say you needed to buy two 20-foot shipping containers. Um, that would mean if I had to do that and I bought them right out of Vegas, that'd be eleven grand. Now, if I get them from the port, I can get each of them for $2,800 times that by two. 
that is $5,600. And then I can get them delivered for about $1,400. So I'm all in about $7,000 versus $11,000. So that alone is a $4,000 savings on your two 20 foot shipping containers. Uh, for, for those of you that might be doing larger type builds and you're combining multiple containers, uh, you know, your savings will just be exponential from there. And a great company to use is a company called Uship. It's a, it's a giant online platform where basically you can put the type of load that you have that you're trying to transport, input all your information on there, and they'll have truckers all across the areas bidding on those loads, and the prices can be very efficient and affordable. Number four, a big area you can save money on your shipping container home build is to manage your own build. Now, this isn't something I would recommend you doing if you don't have knowledge in the area of construction, um, but you can also learn. And so we've put together a container home builder masterclass that basically teaches you step by step how to build out a shipping container home so that you'd be in a position to actually manage a crew and make sure that work is being performed in the right order and being performed correctly. Uh, this is something that if you're in an area with lower regulation or you're doing uh, more of a temporary style build, it can be a great solution. Um, and then the next thing I have for you guys is actually listed right below. And it's a free training that I put together. Uh, it's basically my biggest lessons learned after building a hundred shipping container homes. Uh, the description is in the, or I'm sorry, the link is in the description below. So you can check that out, but that's going to also give you the right tools that you need in order to manage your build. Uh, so that can be a massive savings. You don't need to hire uh, potentially, you know, someone to, to do all of that work. You can do it yourself and find the right subcontractors you want to perform the work. Number five, uh, it comes down to outsourcing your conceptual design overseas. Uh, so this has been really interesting, you know, up until about this year, uh, anytime we needed some conceptual drawings done, so some 2D drawings put together, uh, we have someone locally that we use and he's been great. Um, and, and then when we needed renderings, we would outsource them to a company and he was based out of uh, Canada, the owner of the company. He would do all of our renderings for us. And on average for a set of drawings, uh, basic drawings, um, I might be around 500 bucks. Um, and then for renderings, I'd probably be around... Uh, $1,200. Um, so if you wanted video with those renderings, it could be more. Um, but Fiverr, and there's other websites like this, like Upwork, um, they are basically giving you the opportunity to work with people around the world who specialize in renderings or CAD drawings, and you're able to get them completed for a fraction of the cost. So I'll show you this example here. These are two, uh, this is some stuff we just had done this, this month, actually. Uh, the top one are, are some drawings. It was just some CAD drawings of a 20 foot uh, container home that we're working on. And our price point on that is about $80. So really affordable, uh, really simple to work with. And this is a great first step in order to just get your mind around your design, what you're trying to do. Uh, maybe you want to present an example to the city of what your project is going to be. And this is a good way to help bring it to life and help them understand what you're doing. Um, and then we also had renderings done. You can see in the bottom right. Uh, so for $100, you can get multiple rendered views for your exterior, interior. They can also do video rendering. So walkthroughs of interior and exterior. And all in for 200 bucks, you have some basic drawings and some basic renderings uh, versus having to spend over $1,000. So definitely recommend checking out those types of websites. And there's tons of other stuff they can do as well to kind of help you uh, in terms of creating any content you need or uh, bringing your project to life. Uh, now, uh, we are halfway through. We got five more to go. Um, but I do want to ask you if you have any hacks that you know uh, anything that you've learned along the way that we do not mention in this video or that you haven't heard up till now, please let us know in the comments below. Help the community out and uh, teach us what you've learned. Uh, also, if you're enjoying this so far, go ahead and smash that like button and we would really appreciate that. All right, number six, you want to design to minimize costs. Now, what this means is you want to design smart. Now, with containers, there certainly is a way that you can design that's going to it, it will basically amplify your expenses uh, and you do not want to do that. Um, so with containers, if it's a major structural member, right, the four corner posts, the top rails, things like that, you really don't want to cut in and cut through and have to spend a ton of money 
reinforcing. Um, and so you do see container designs sometimes that are really eccentric and really cool and crazy. Um, but typically the crazier you get in your design, the more engineering that's going to be required, the more steel that's going to be required. Those are all things that are going to add to your bottom line. For some people that might not be a problem, but if you're looking to stay on a budget, these are some things to keep in mind. Let me show you a few examples here. So um, you can see here, the, the two examples on the left are two units that, that we've built. The, the point I want to make there is with both of these designs, the top one in particular, there's no cutout required. So there's no cutouts and reinforcements required in that version because we just built an entry door behind the original shipping container door. Um, this saved us money on steel. This saved us money on labor for cutouts and reinforcements. Um, so that can be a nice little hack. Uh, in your design. And what's nice is ultimately it's, it's, it's additional security. If this is a unit that's going in a remote location, you can now close your container doors over your glass slider and you can sleep comfortably at night, you know, knowing that your vacation home is protected. So uh, bottom left is another unique example. It's where we, we kept the original shipping container doors, converted them into the main entry door. So now in this particular unit, you have these basically nine foot by eight foot giant metal glass doors, something that probably would cost over $10,000 if you try to do this in just regular construction, but you're basically repurposing those shipping container doors, inserting those glass panels, and really just creatively adding a lot of value to the home, low cost. Um, and then on the right, I want to make two points. One is when it comes to stacking and connecting side by side. Uh, in order to save costs, you want to go knuckle to knuckle. So you can see here on that uh, top right example, um, you know, basically that container is stacked directly on the knuckles of the other container. Now, that's the way containers are designed to be stacked. That's the way they're engineered to be stacked. So when you're trying to get something like that approved, it's going to be a lot simpler than if you start offsetting the containers and, and, and turning them sideways on top of each other. You can certainly do that, but just realize you will accrue some additional engineering costs and reinforcement costs. And then in the bottom right, we have them side by side, uh, knuckle to knuckle as well. So those are simple things you can do in your design. If you're looking to keep it, uh, keep a tight budget and keep your costs low, um, those tweaks will certainly help you out. Um, number seven is to negotiate your pricing on your materials. Uh, so you'd be surprised that if you were to just even go into the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot and say you're trying to build out a 20 foot shipping container home and you know, hey, in materials, I'm going to be spending about $12,000. You can actually go into these stores and a Lowe's and a Home Depot may have 80% of the materials you need. So you may, let me call it 10 grand you're looking to spend and they'll help negotiate and get that price down for you because you're you're basically ordering a bulk order, a large quantity of items. So for us if we don't do that and we just go in and spend 10 grand on items without trying to get it discounted, um, then we're going to spend full retail 10 grand. However, if we go to one of the pro service desks, develop a relationship with them there, let them know about my project that I'm doing, they can get my prices down probably about 25%. So instead of spending $10,000 on materials for this project, I'm now spending $7,500 on materials, saving me $2,500. Um, part of the catch is they will want you to do that bulk order. So sometimes they don't like you to say, oh, I'm going to spend 10 grand with you over the next three months. And every, every purchase is just up to 500 bucks. They won't like that. You, can, you, need, to, you need to basically do a bulk order. Maybe it's in two, two, two portions. You're doing, you know, 3,500 bucks here, another three grand there or something like that. But um, that is certainly a way to help negotiate pricing and get those costs down. Number eight is having an RV setup versus a permanent setup. Now, you'll notice that in the tiny home industry, everything is on wheels. And there's a very specific reason for that. If you're on wheels, you're now regulated by the DMV and not by the building department. The regulations for DMV is a lot simpler to meet then in some areas, regulations for building departments. So here's an example of a RV unit that we did. This one is in Pahrump, Nevada. And this is for a client that was basically just looking to live in it full time. Uh, we've worked with other clients in Pahrump, Nevada that also had uh, dreams of doing container homes full time. But by going this route and going on wheels, this client was able to save a ton of money and a ton of time because it didn't have to go through the building department. When you go through the building department, there's going to be a lot of standards, requirements, 
steps that are going to be required for you to meet that are far excess what the DMV is going to require. So uh, in some instances, you can't do this on your property. You need to reach out to your zoning department and see what you can do. Typically, an RV unit is a good secondary dwelling. Uh, basically, if you have a main home on your property, there are a lot of locations where you can add a unit like this to your backyard. But if you are looking to do it as a main home, you might be stuck and required by your county to do it as a permanent structure. Um, and uh, with that, uh, we'll jump in number nine, uh, resourceful furnishings and finishes. So there's a lot of things you can do here creatively. Uh, just how you were creative in getting a container and repurposing it. Uh, you can also do that with your building materials, specifically when it comes to your furniture and your finishes. So like I remember the very first shipping container home that I built, I basically DIY'd the furnishings. So I made my own Murphy bed, I made my own cabinetry, and I made... Uh, I refurbished certain furniture pieces. So I found the old 1970s dresser, refurbished it, made it look nice. And uh, for 70 bucks, had a really nice dresser in that unit. Um, a couple other things you can do though, just some examples from the past. Uh, we have some unique things we've done with pallet wood. So external kind of like pallet gardens, uh, basically some planters under the windows. Uh, you can see in the picture on the right, you know, pallet accent walls. That's a corrugated metal shower. Uh, so you can buy those corrugated sheets for, you know, I don't know the pricing now, maybe 30 bucks a pop. You need say four sheets and that can be a cost effective way to build out something that still has a good aesthetic to it. Um, and then on that bottom left image, you'll actually see the original container floors. Um, so we basically sanded the floors down, ended up, uh, staining them and putting an epoxy on them. Um, and that certainly helped to keep those costs down. Um, all right. Uh, it is our mission to help you successfully build your own container home. And so we do want to keep providing you guys content like this. Uh, now, before we jump into number 10, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would encourage you to go ahead and get subscribed. Um, and it's our goal to have basically videos coming out weekly that will teach you how to build your own container home. Uh, number 10, uh, it's basically the idea of rural, rural locations versus major cities. So uh, what I mean by that is if you're looking to build a container home in a major city and it's going to be the main home on a property, there's going to be a ton of red tape that you have to go through, right? And that's just the case with any type of custom home that's being built. Uh, what that means is it's not going to be cheap. You know, most likely it will be um, top dollar. And so if you're looking to do something that's like very budget friendly, I don't know if that is your best approach. Uh, I would say if you're in a major city and you're using one as an RV model, you can do that very budget friendly. Um, if you're looking to do something in a rural area, that, in fact, is a great way to do a budget-friendly container home. Uh, typically, in rural areas, uh, regulation is not as intense. And so where in a major city, there might be a checklist of like, like 100 different things that you need to do uh, through your container build process. In a rural city, it might be very different. You know, For them, they may say, hey, we're very... Uh, content with you doing it as an owner builder. You can design your own plans, submit your plans to us. We'll review them. If they meet our code, you'll be good to go. And then that build process isn't as crazy. You know, of course, they're going to probably want things to be engineered. So your foundation, your roof, your container, they're going to want to perform key inspections just to make sure everything's safe and done right. But, but in the smaller towns, you know, they're not going to be as stringent on certain things. So like, you know, we've done builds in California and California definitely has one of the higher regulated building departments. And so our energy values are really high. It means tons of insulation in your walls, on the underfloor and the ceiling. Uh, you may need to include fire sprinklers, uh, a lot of different things like that, um, that can just add a lot of cost to your build. Or in, and sometimes in these smaller towns and mountain towns, desert towns, uh, they're not going to require as much, which, which in the end will ultimately save you a lot of money. Um, so with that, uh, I do want to encourage you. We do have that uh, free training for you in the description below. Uh, go ahead and check that out. It's about a 30-minute training, just going over the biggest lessons uh, over the course of building 100 units. You know, we've learned a lot of things the hard way, and uh, that is going to bless you because you don't have to learn the hard way. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, and with that, that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you want more information about uh, what we do, you can always check us out on our website at alternativelivingspaces.com.